Welcome to Let's Play Mega Mary. I'm GTF. This is my very first Let's Play, so please be gentle. Yeah, like that's really going to happen. I'm suicidal enough to pick this game to start with. This is Mega Mary, an independently produced game designed by Twilight Frontier, makers of Eternal Fighter Zero, the key-themed fighting game, as well as Super Marissa Land, the Toho Mario game for all you other Toho fanatics. This is yet another one of the infinitely many Toho spoof games, taking some other popular genre and adding all the myriad of Toho characters to it. This is Mega Man combined with Toho. Those of you familiar with the series know it's a bullet hell shooter where thousands of shots are on the screen at one time, and life and death is decided behind a pixel. Now combine this with a Mega Man game. I'll just give you a minute to think about that. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. No, really, it is actually kind of fun. Oh, well, let's get started. Interesting concept behind this game is that you have two playable characters, Marissa, and you have a secondary one, Alice. You might remember Alice from either the fifth game, but most likely you're going to remember her from the seventh, Perfect Cherry Blossom, Stage 3 boss. And here is our classic 8 boss lineup. Some of the more popular characters, I suppose, all the main ones, anyway. Not exactly easy, all of them. Some of them are actually kind of tough, but others are just flat out easy. This one being one of them, but we'll get back to her later. We're going to start here, with everyone's favorite knife-throwing maid. And the demon screen. And we get our first mini-boss type character right away. Hong Mei Ling, from Embodiment of Scarlet Devil, Stage 3 boss. And now I've disposed of her. I made that seem a lot easier than she is. That's because this is a completely flat and open stage right here in the beginning. Your later run-ins with her are not as friendly at all because you have much cramped quarters. And you might not have noticed it, but her rebound after her first leap is a hell of a lot faster. That, neck, that second kick is a lot harder to dodge, especially because she bounces off walls. That's a good- I think that was a pretty good illustration, as will be this one. Yeah, right there. That's how they things shoot in this game. Lots of times, or just large streams of bullets. These fairies are other good examples. Let's get rid of these. Okay. Most things die- most of these enemies die in one shot to Marissa. Unfortunately, Alice does half damage with this little laser. The advantage of her is that she can- it can pierce through enemies that hide behind shields. The hat- the met hat equivalents in this game are not affected by it. They still have to actually expose themselves. This thing right here is a- Damn it! Die! There we go. Anyway, as I was saying, this here is a large weapon power-up. I don't have any, so that's meaningless, and our mushroom serves our health. I'm not gonna make any getting high on mushroom jokes. That would just be low class. Just going to ignore him. Something worth noting uh, is that Alice and Marissa's health are separate. So essentially, you have two health bars per life. However, if any one of them drops completely to zero, you lose a life automatically. So you do not have, like, two chances in one life. Get close to it. As far as I know, there's nothing over in this little niche under here. So, no. I have tried, I have not seen anything. Up here would be an extra life, but I don't really need it. Nope, that's not gonna do it. I usually just take a hit and run through this, but I've got time to spare. There we go, that should do it. Yep, there we go. That's actually kinda hard to get through. Because, well, you know how these things work, like in, Meg in Metal Man stage. They drop the second you come near them, they just do that ad nauseum. 
say right here is that extra life. I would be able to get that by going up that ladder, but these walls can only be destroyed by a certain weapon, which I don't have. And I should not have gotten hit by that guy. I wasn't paying attention. I think you get, you get the image of how this game fills up the screen with shots. And just to be merciful, you do not have the huge hitboxes you do in Mega Man. You have equally little ones, like in traditional Toho games. You'll probably see that a lot in this next fight. I can't believe I missed that. That is probably the more annoying part of Sakuya's stage. But otherwise, this you probably can see that this is the reason why I picked her first. Good way to show off how the game controls, because you don't have too many enemies just com constantly bombarding you. This stage is mostly trap dodging, which is simple enough to do. There are some lead there are some other stages who are just plain merciless in the quantity of enemies that come at you. Thankfully, they don't actually shoot at you. Imagine what kind of a nightmare that would be. Mainly because... Ugh, damn it. Well, that all counts out. Another mini-boss. Lanasa Prism River. Another one you might remember from Perfect Cherry Blossom. She is one of these shielded enemies. That's why Alice is useful. She can shoot through the violin. Oh, don't worry, the other Prism Rivers will show up, too. Fighting all three of them at the same time is the most annoying thing you can do in this game, and they always appear all together in the worst possible positions. Here we have our classic double gate. Wouldn't be at Mega Man without one. Those originally was because... Those actually were originally put in Mega Man because they didn't know that the console was capable of loading the whole stage, including the boss. Turns out, it could, but they kept it in this tradition. Now I'm going to use Marissa for this fight because she actually does more damage per hit in general. I'm probably going to shut up a little bit during this fight because this one requires some pinpoint accuracy, but not as much. See? I always get hit by that. I used to be able to dodge it, though. Ah, jump. that. Okay, here's her desperation stage. All bosses in this game have a desperation sort of mode, where they start doing some new, completely new pattern or introduce a whole new attack. In this case, Sakuya just does this over and over and over again. And I was getting a little low on life there. There we go. This is why you want to try to keep both of them healthy at the same time. Could not take another hit with her. Thing about this, what about uh, something about this game is you weapons are not shared. You have to select who to give it to, and their weapons are completely different too. Mercs would be thousand knives. It's basically your flash stopper, time stopper, centaur flash even. It's your time stopping move, and when you see it, it's clearly a JoJo's Bizarre reference. Yeah, I'm sorry, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure reference. Everyone's favorite Dio Brando. I'll show it to you guys, even though I'm not going to be taking it. I'm getting Alice's version. Quicksilver. You'll see it soon enough. Trust me, I rely on this weapon very heavily. Here's our weapon get screen. Complete with the color change. Get used to seeing Alice in this white outfit. Because you're going to be seeing her a lot in it. Here is our password screen. Cute little ditty, isn't it? Okay, I'll stop. I'm sorry. Well, I think that concludes our first episode of Mega Mary. Thank you for watching. I am GTF, and I hope to see you again soon.